Welcome to this PRI Introduction to Service Provider Reporting. This tutorial video aims to provide service providers with an opportunity to learn the basics of reporting, including what the benefits are and what the reporting process normally looks like. First, we are going to go through the basics of the reporting for PRI, such as why we report, the benefits, the timeline for reporting. Then we will discuss how you can prepare for reporting and what information you will have to report on. Then we will provide an overview of where you should start the reporting process and what you will be reporting on, including a couple of examples of the logic of the framework. Then we will explain what the report typically looks like and meaning behind some symbols that are present throughout the framework. Then we can discuss the outputs you receive after the reporting cycle. Lastly, we will also direct you to relevant guidance, resources, and frequently asked questions that you will find useful during reporting. PRI Reporting Overview When you sign up to the Principles for Responsible Investment, you are committing to six principles. Reporting to the PRI on your activities and progress towards implementing the principles fulfills Principle 6. The Service Provider Reporting Framework was introduced in 2017 and made mandatory in 2018 after an extensive signatory consultation. While reporting is a requirement of the PRI, you as a signatory benefit from the process and outputs. By completing the PRI reporting, you play a key role in standardizing the reporting for service provider activities, promoting knowledge sharing among signatories, and enhancing best practice in the industry. Your transparency report provides a summary of your existing Responsible Investment or ESG services and can be easily shared internally or externally to showcase your practices. This gives you an opportunity to build relationships with existing and new clients while also engaging your signatory peers regarding your Responsible Investment or ESG services. Reporting also delivers PRI with the unique opportunity to use all the signatory data on an aggregate level to present the big picture analyze trends, and create leading guidance for signatories. Once you are a signatory to the PRI, you must report on a yearly basis to maintain your signatory status. Reporting is mandatory for all signatories, however, signatories do get a voluntary reporting year after they have signed up. We recommend that signatories do report in their voluntary year as a learning opportunity and to prepare for their mandatory reporting year. Now that you have signed up and determined your first mandatory reporting year, you will report between the beginning of January to the end of March each year. After March, our online reporting tool where you submit your report will be closed and you will not be able to submit a report after that. You will be able to access your reporting outputs immediately after you have submitted your report. During the rest of the year, the reporting and assessment team works on validating data, analyzing the feedback that signatories have submitted through the reporting framework, reviews the reporting framework modules to ensure that they are updated and aligned with PRI guidance, and improves technical and IT aspects to ensure that the reporting process is smooth. The updates to the reporting framework are published in late November in preparation for the following reporting cycle in January. Now that you know when to report, I'm going to outline the three basic steps of the reporting process. Firstly, it is good to get an understanding of the type of information that the PRI will ask you to report on. You can do this by visiting the Reporting for Signatories webpage at unpri.org and downloading the most recent copy of the reporting framework. On this webpage, you can also view our main definitions document and any other guidance provided. Secondly, once you understand what information you will report on, you can prepare for the reporting cycle by starting to collect that information within your organization. As mentioned, the reporting cycle starts in January each year. This is when you will be able to log into our online reporting tool and enter the information you have collected. Finally, after responding to and reviewing your report, you can submit your responses. The PRI will then provide you with your reporting outputs. Reporting for Service Providers To understand what you need to report on, it is important that you understand our Service Provider Reporting Framework. We have seven modules that are available for you to report on as service providers. Three are mandatory for all signatures to report on, and the other four are business-specific modules. First, you will complete the Organizational Overview Module, which will influence and determine the other modules that you will report on. This is a Get to Know Your Organization section. 
This module must be completed first for you to respond to the rest of the reporting framework. Next, you will respond to the strategy and governance module. The questions in this module are about your overall approach to responsible investment, or ESG, at the organizational level. We ask about policies and processes in this module. Based on your responses in the organizational overview module, your business-specific modules will unlock. This includes business activities such as investment consultancy, active ownership services, reporting and assurance, and research and data provision. You will only see modules which are applicable to you. If you do not identify any of the business-specific modules, you will only be required to complete the Organizational Overview, Strategy and Governance, and Closing Module. The last module that you will complete is a Closing Module, where you can report on how you have verified the responses in your report, give feedback to the PRI, and review your submission one last time. The illustration currently displayed shows you how the logic of the Service Provider Reporting Framework works. As mentioned, it is strongly driven by your responses to the Organizational Overview Module, in particular Indicators 003 and 005, where you specify your service offerings and the ESG coverage. For instance, if you report in 003 that you provide investment consultancy services, and in 005 that you derive a certain percentage of revenue from the ESG service in your investment consultancy offering, the investment consultancy module will unlock. If none of your revenue is derived from ESG activities for the services reported in 003, you will only be required to complete the Strategy and Governance and Closing module. The reporting framework modules consist of different question types, or what we call indicators. There are different indicator purposes and disclosure types. Each indicator will be labeled with its purpose and disclosure level. While responding to the framework indicators, we want to be as clear as possible. Therefore, we have created icons and explanations for the purpose and disclosure of each indicator. Gateway indicators unlock other indicators. You will find most gateway indicators in the Organizational Overview module. Descriptive indicators are there to provide more context and allow you to give a narrative response. When it comes to the disclosure level of indicators, there are three types. You are required to respond to the mandatory indicators. They make up a large portion of the reporting framework and your responses to these indicators will be by default public. You have the option to respond to the voluntary indicators. You can also select whether you want to disclose your response to the voluntary indicators. Some information is commercially sensitive, therefore there are indicators that are mandatory to report on, but where you can select the disclosure level according to your own preference. After submitting your report, you are provided with two different outputs. You have a transparency report which contains your responses to all the indicators that are publicly disclosed. You will also get a private responsible investment report which contains all of your responses to the reporting framework, both public and private. During your voluntary reporting year, you will have the opportunity to report on the framework whilst also keeping your transparency report completely private. All of your reporting outputs can be accessed through the data portal, where you will also find other signatories' reports and where you can view customizable snapshot reports. If you want to learn more about service provider reporting, you can visit unpri.org. You can also review our reporting guidance documents, including Service Provider Overview and Guidance, Main Definitions, Indicator Updates and Changes, Service Provider Reporting Framework Modules, and General Reporting Frequently Asked Questions. Thank you for watching this PRI Introduction to Service Provider Reporting. Please contact reporting at unpri.org with any questions.